Sao Paulo, brother. It's kind of fun, good pay. We keep people safe. It's been eight years since Remedy Entertainment gave us Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. Now Max Payne 3 is on the way with development in the hands of Rockstar rather than Remedy. Matthias Müllerin, Remedy Managing Director, and Sam Lake, Creative Director at Remedy and writer of the first two games, spoke to us about how they've been involved in the making of this third game in the series and what to expect from it. We were able to give feedback and it's almost like you're cherry picking, you know, you're, you're able to give your input, your thoughts, your feedback without actually having to think of the realities of what it means to implement a certain feature or to change a level or anything like that. And I think in, in that respect, it's, it's been fun. Uh, it's, it's almost like being a game reviewer. We've had quite a few people involved. Uh, the art director from, from Max Payne 1 and 2, the project lead from Max Payne 2, the senior game de gameplay designers, the senior technical artist, the lead programmer, myself, our creative director. So quite a few people offering input um, uh, for, for the game. I don't want to overstate our role. I mean, they are, they are doing the development. They are working hard at it. And they're the ones who deserve full credit for it. We're here just to offer input. It's almost like you have a writer you know, who's written a book and you know is in the process of editing it and he gives it to another writer to read and you know we'll give feedback uh, i think creative creative people are are great that way that they're collaborative and they're very open uh, and i think it, and the, even in the games industry i think there's there's not a sense of competition i think it's more of one of cooperation so kind of the my my vibe on on new york was the, what we built for max Payne one and max Payne two was very much that we had kind of these really slick office buildings, kind of power office, you know, testaments to, to corporate uh, entities. And then we had kind of the low end and the dodgy neighborhoods, kind of the crack houses and, and, and rooftops and stuff like that. And that was a very hostile environment for Max, um, uh, alien in some way. And then when we go to Sao Paulo, we'll see kind of this, the whole spectrum once again from kind of the shiny, flashy corporate side to kind of the dodgy favelas and kind of the uh, a very hostile environment. Max as a character uh, at certain points is really really lost in his life so it feels like a very good move to to move him into a very unfamiliar uh, surroundings where uh, he he doesn't even necessarily understand uh, what what the characters around him are are talking so so it it feels like feels like, based on what the character is going through, the surroundings kind of fit that perfectly. There's been a lot of talk about uh, that scene where he shaves his head, and, and it, it feels like a very, very kind of pivotal moment in the game. It's, it's very kind of, very much a character moment, and, and he needs to, to do something to regain control. So, so it's almost like this ritualistic act that, that he suddenly decides to shave his hair and, and kind of get some control back into his life. And even though he suddenly looks very different, that's the moment where we get Max Payne, kind of the Max Payne we know comes back and, and takes control and, and moves from, from being a punching bag into someone who delivers punches. And, and, kind of uh, goes into the offense. Some of the design choices that you would have in 2003 versus some of the design choices you want in 2012, those are very, you know, there's, they're different things that we've come to expect as gamers. So, you know, there's a lot of nostalgia for older games, but once you pick them up, you kind of look at the interfaces and some things feel a bit clunky or this is out of place. Modern shooter that, that uh, wants to be taken seriously, uh, obviously has to have these modern elements and, and, and they do fit very well. Attention to detail that comes with Rockstar games, you'll see a certain attitude that comes with Rockstar games, but I think those are, those are perfectly natural and good, good for the franchise. I mean, f for this game, I think the individual choices that they've made probably different from the individual choices that we would have made, but the sum of the parts is very much to the same equation. I think, you know, you'll clearly see that it's it's a rock star game and that's a good thing the the team that's making the game will naturally uh, be kind of affect the, the tone of the game and it in in many ways it, it feels like a modern interpretation of, of many of the max Payne elements 
you know, if, if you repeat and rinse what you've done before without adding anything new to the mixture, and thereby default removing something from the mixture, uh, then you're just going to end up with something that's kind of like the original, but you know, I think it's better to, to boldly have a direction where you want to go and, and to build it. We, we were a small team and, and single player mode was challenge enough for us. Uh, multiplayer was discussed already with Max Payne 1. We just had no way of achieving it, so, so it's nice to see that uh, come about uh, finally. been worth the wait and, and uh, in, in many ways I mean we spend a lot of years working very closely on, on Max and, and now kind of uh, getting near to release it, it feels like like kind of welcoming uh, 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 an old friend uh, back to our lives so it's been worth the wait. I can get you work Max work that only a guy like you can do. I ain't a cop no more. And certainly, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they're offering input on something that we're doing next.